Kumbuluma Sebeti ndo tenda la gangaga Ikaleluma wayo Tabo fatu ngan understand So I made a trip down to South Africa. Um, shout to the whole Apple Music South Africa team for setting it up and getting us access to some of the hottest artists on the scene in hip hop. We're gonna be in Joburg, Johannesburg, and we're getting over to Cape Town too. Hopefully I can find the kid Shane Eagle, my bro Java, and the homie Youngster CPT. I'll get to meet him and learn about his whole cultural experience being colored and how that works into the whole South African hip hop scene as well as the cultural scene out here. So we're gonna do some great things for, for music and hip hop with this trip to South Africa, man. Sitting down with Java out here. What section of South Africa we in right now? Where we at? This is called Wamae Mai Food Market. I want to get into the joint off the Black Panther soundtrack, Seasons. How big did that song become? It really did well. And what's crazy is that I didn't know what to talk about until the last day, actually. I was so confused because now I have these 16 bars, but what do I say? There's so much to talk about. Do I do it in English so that the whole world can understand? Or do I choose the feeling more than the understanding of what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, for me, I, I, I really went with the feeling. I remember on the last day I went to Ralph, I'm like, I think I got something. It's like, okay. And it just came. This year you put out Hello and you said Dakota yes. was a leap? Yeah, Dakota was a leak. 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 Till today, we don't know who put it out. The opening it says, Bang Pume Kaya Bata Bafanyo Bato Lengile. It means when I left home, they told me you'll find your brothers on the street. You know, it, 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 meaning that, <clears throat> and it's always like that actually, whereby you still have your own family, but the people that will look out for you, people that will support you most of the time, it, it, it's guys that you'll find in the street. Right. You know, I'm, I'm where I am because of them. You know what I mean? Like, when I introduced you earlier to MT the hustle, you know, I, I, when I met him, he was here in the city, homeless, you know, and that, inspired me a lot and it changed my life and I remember there was a time when everyone was criticizing me yeah. from my hood They're like where is Java now Java is in town there with some kids he's still saying he wants to be a rapper he needs to quit he's with some kids they're sagging and you know what I mean yeah. and, and 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 for me those were the people that understood me you know those, those that was the only time I felt respected and I respected them too it was not a matter of you have to be famous first, you have to make it first for us to respect each other. We, we, just, we just, just gotta connect and respect each other the same way. So right. around them, that was the only time I was myself and accepted. So that's what it talks about on the opening and it says, Bebas Valila Machanel Manjes Echa Fiti Code, which there's a um, slang called Valila Machanel, closing channels. So it says they used to close channels, but now we can afford to pay the decoder. What I hope that we can always do is find a way to show how much we're still going through the same struggles. Yeah. And that way, you know, the one thing that the, the ancestors gave us that nobody can take away from us is our ability to True. communicate with each other through this music. True. True. Right? True. It's crazy, yeah. They can't take that. Nah, so this No matter what happens, the drums is gonna ring The off. drums go the, bang. The vocals gonna ring Yeah. Off. We're gonna tell our stories. Yeah. And now more than ever, our, our stories can't be stopped. Yeah. You know, the most powerful music is when music speaks for either moments in time or people yeah. that don't have a voice and you don't get to hear from it, especially yeah. with black music and anything hip hop, but the most impactful, yeah. uh, important music yeah. always was talking about shit that uh, helped us understand one another, learn about each other, navigate, you know, dealing with uh, oppressive situations. Yeah. Because that's something that, you know, we are still as a people, no matter where you are on the globe, yeah. that's what black people are confronted with right now. I never really talked too much about why I stayed away from traveling to South Africa, which was mostly because of the whole 
you know, black colored African mm -hmm. post apartheid shuffle, mm -hmm. you know, I think as a, as a black American of mixed race, when you start seeing other mixed race individuals and I'm trying to process, wait, so colored isn't black? That's the difference over here. It's like you were put in different townships right. based on your race. I feel like the people are not actually aware of, you know, the higher control of they trying to separate you, you know right. what I mean? That's why in South Africa, till this day, you have colored townships and then you have black townships. When you address these things in your music, because mm -hmm. um, you get to some of this stuff, 100%. Um, how is it received? This whole xenophobia, racial conflict that was happening in, in, in South Africa based, you know, if you're from a different African country and you're in South Africa, then you're not supposed to be here, but it's like, we're one. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the Vanya record is basically without making it um, like a xenophobic thing. Kids just like see three different African artists come together when everyone else isn't. That's kind of like low key a message like, yeah. yo. When I heard about you, mm -hmm. I didn't understand, you know, these, this aspect, right? I heard your music. I didn't know what you look like. Mm -hmm. I just was like, yo, this dude's popping in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Boom. And I was just some dope rap shit. Growing up in Rubber Ridge, yeah. I was actually the white kid right. out of the right. other kids. So this crib right here, 86, this is still my aunt's crib. She's uh -huh. probably still in there, probably. We're not bothering auntie. Nah, we're not bothering Them auntie. Them fences is high at auntie's crib. She's oh, not, right. playing. She not, playing. She not playing. She's not playing. She got the big dogs in there. So over here basically was the only park that Rubber Ridge just ever, ever so had. everybody played right there. You hear what he's saying? So there's a little gym in this spot. He's like, show them where we used to pump. Uh, yeah. So we used to like, you know how it is, it's just like a bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pull up. Yeah, Kina? You say he's not? Nah? They used to have drag races. Yeah. Pull up here at the park, get like these old school beamers and they'd spin them and yeah. let rounds off and that. But it was more of like a, a celebration. It's like thing. a side show. It was like, like a having side, a bay. Like side show. And then the drug wave came in and like kind of changed it. So when you get a kid who comes from like here and has mm -hmm. seen like what I've done, mm -hmm. like imagine like one of these little kids see Shane doing something. It's like, yo, he came from exactly yeah. where I, I came from here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And he sees me like that. It's, it's going to drive that spirit in him mm -hmm. to like take it all the way. So that's kind of kind of the, 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 the beauty in it, you know? This is the only park behind it, behind all this graffiti over here. Got it. Ebro is the first person to come to Ruby Ridge oh, on some on some real, real, real. So thank it's you. Love, bro. Yeah, man. Blessing the presence. Yeah, of course, man. Touching the kids. It's love. My pleasure. This is my first time in South Africa, so it's mm. Trying to understand the, the colored experience mm. versus the black experience versus mm. the mixed experience versus the African yeah, and, and why and what the agenda really was. You know, what, what South Africa is going through and what you guys specifically as the young people mm. who are speaking for that generation are going mm. through is uncharted territory. Yes. It's never, nobody's ever seen anything like this. So figuring out how to communicate that and how to create opportunity for progress, all that's being written right now. A lot has been made of you rapping in uh, Afrikaan, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And crazy. having the accent, right? Mm -hmm. There's been, like, everybody's like, yo, he's real, he's... Explain it, because it feels like there would have been artists already in hip hop that already... They did this yeah. before. I suppose a lot of the guys of the current generation are not aware of, like, Prophets of the City and mm. Pasifani Cap and Godessa and you know, Black Noise. I mean, these were all groups that pioneered the South African hip hop. Right. But it's like we were talking earlier on off camera about like the little rivalry between the two cities. Right. Like Johannesburg is where the media thrives and where current entertainment lives. Right. But Cape Town is where it began. Right. So, you know, as much as we kind of don't want to say it, colored guys adopted hip hop first right. in South Africa right. because of apartheid, because right. of the hardships they were experiencing right. and because of groups like Africa Bambata and the 
um, the public enemy and and NWA, those messages were filtering through to us. When well, the there. experience is similar, and right? The, the oppressive, right? The oppressed experience with the army and the right. government right, and right, the right, riots. Right, yeah, right. So the music was adopted very early, like early '80s. They were doing it as well, and they were rapping in Afrikaans. Right. This is before I was born. Right. But because the message was so militant, because it was so aggressive, the, ma the mainstream wasn't covering it. Mainstream that. wasn't accepting yeah, it. Mainstream right. wasn't covering it. So a lot of it hasn't been documented. Now. Do you feel like 3T, the album that you dropped this mm -hmm. year, goes the deepest of all of your music? Of all my releases, this goes below the surface of what we have experienced. And on the cover, I put my grandfather because I felt like uh, going to my mother's time, that's a bit too early because she only was born into the, the forced removals era, mm -hmm. whereas my grandfather was alive before that during that and after that. Mm. So I felt like the best way for me to understand how the cycle can somehow be broken is if I go like to the source. Right. And then the song just be lacquer. Mm. It's like, just be just cool, be cool. Just, oh, chill, yeah. chill. just chill, chill. Just chill out, bro. Stop trying to overthink things. Stop trying to like, you know, walk around with your chest out and flex yeah, and yeah. expect people to know you. Just be lacquer, bro. You know what I mean? Just know that, be humble, yeah. be low key, fly with us. You know, it's all good. Bro. But also understand that we all, you know, we're trying to unify things. Yeah. So in the opening line, I say, I thought you'd have something better to say. Why you always talk about me in a negative way? Yeah. You know, so, so like you go on social media and people like their first response or their first reaction will usually be to down something before they actually uplift it or big it up, you know? Yeah. And I see a lot of it going on in our time, like, you know, the cyber wars and cyber bullying and yeah. gay bashing or whatever the case may be. Like those are always the topics people are so quick to speak on. But like, when are we gonna big up each other, you know? So just be liquor, be cool, and we all get along fine. Especially on this album, there's not much cursing in it. Right, okay. So that's also my way to try and allow the parents to let the kids listen to it in front of them and they're not having to hide it away as if it's like some bad curse that they're listening to a guy rap in local dialect and local slang. Because I mentioned those groups from earlier in the POC, the Black Noise, the Brasifani Car, but since then, it's been like 15 years of silence. Right. Until this new voice came through, you know, and I use the internet as my tool, which I know the kids are hooked up to every yeah, day. Right. So I tried to make my music a bit more clean. And in doing so, I also realized you say more. Right. When you leave out some of these profanities, <laughs> you actually say a lot more in terms of content, in right. terms of value of what you're saying, like Yati, for example. There's no cursing in it. The Cape of Good Hope, there's no cursing in it. Just be liquor, there's no cursing in it. You know, so I do it strategically knowing that liquor means cool. So if I have a song about being cool, I can perform it at school for kids. Right, right. And the teachers won't have a problem with inviting me there because they know like, okay, yeah, uh, he has his, you know, edgy tracks, but the set that he's doing now is clean. Right. You know, so yeah. I've also done it like purposefully so that I can always stay connected to the youth, you know, so that the, the parents don't like, like outcast me or something. And the parents are actually happy to bring them to the store because when they're listening to the album, they're like, shit, this guy's actually saying something. Right. I know my kid's at the back here, but I'm also jamming to this at the same time while I'm driving, you know? So I've had parents even tell me that they really appreciate me going through the Cape of Good Hope and going through VOC, Voice of the Cape, to almost educate their child in ways that school and them as a parent can't. Like, I see kids walking here all the time, and they're so influenced by what I'm saying that sometimes they'll just come in the shop and stay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy anything, I'm not going to ask anybody for a size, but just to look at it and see it come to life in this way. Because last month or two months, three months ago, this was just a normal block that was dead and unlively. Right. And now there's so much going here. There's Ebro coming through, we're shooting music videos outside. Yeah. On Saturdays, the block is lit up. So I, I think for them, there's it, it also some sort of a a progression that they witnessed, yeah. that they feel that they are part of. And it's crazy when you become a gatekeeper. Right. Or when people, like, label you as the gatekeeper. Right. And I've realized, like I said, this place in South Africa has never heard of me. But in this city, I'm the gatekeeper here. Yeah. So... They look to you now. I mean, you got, you, you, um, you know, you want to process it because they're the ones that got you here. Mm. And so you want to make sure that when, you know, your community, your family helps you get somewhere, you can yeah. funnel that right back. And also now you have to make a decision, like with all the experiences you had with gatekeepers, 
What kind of gatekeeper do you want to be? Ah, yes. Yeah. What kind of a king do you want to be? I am an African. This is me, this is my hair, and this is who I am. And that's what I wanted people to feel. Music transcends language, and in, in, in that's what I believe. That right now we are being us in every shape and form, in every sh uh, shade and complexion, in every part, every tribe, in every different cultures that we have, but to have that thing that I am an African, and you, you know, like the chest out, and you're like, this is me. That's, that's the kind of power and energy that I want people to feel. Hey, 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 hey.